Hey everyone, Rachel Alford here from Cozy Nooks Designs. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make the tic-tac-toe on the go Valentine's edition. So yes, I do have plans to make other versions besides just Valentine's Day. So probably like a St. Patrick's Day one. I've been meaning to do a Halloween one for a while and maybe even a Christmas one. That way, if you have presents you need to give your kiddos, like for class, um, classmates, <laughs> if your kids need to bring a present to their school for their classmates, this might be a good choice for them. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive right in. So let's grab our hooks, hooks and yarn, and let's get started. To make the tic-tac-toe on the go Valentine's Day set, you will need four different colors of worsted weight yarn a tapestry needle, scissors, a G 4.0 millimeter crochet hook, as well as a, an I 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. And I'm not sure if this is a good idea or a bad idea, but I am attempting, I'm gonna make the hearts, one of the, some of the hearts in this pink glitter yarn. I'm not sure if you're able to see the glitter on camera there, um, but my girls may fight over those heart pieces, so stay tuned, I'll let you know if this turns out to be a bad idea. <laughs> to begin, we will be working the base of the tic-tac-toe board, and we will be making two of these. So using your I 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and your white or whatever yarn you're using for the base, make a slip knot, insert your hook, Fix your watch if you need to. <laughs> and then we are going to chain 12. So you yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and you're going to continue doing that 12 times. So I'm five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So you can see I have my 12 chains here and then I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to half double crochet into the second chain from my hook. So the loop on my hook does not count and so I count over one, two. So into this stitch right here, this chain, I'm going to insert my hook and remember I yarned over and then insert my hook, yarn over, draw up a loop. So I have three loops on my hook and I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops on my hook. And that is my first half double crochet made for row one. And I'm going to yarn over, and you can see I've already worked this stitch right here. So working into the next stitch, I'm going to insert my hook, draw up a loop. I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. Again, yarn over, going into the next chain stitch right there. I'm gonna insert my hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. So I'm gonna continue doing that all the way down for row one. And this will work up very fast if you are um, an experienced beginner because there are simple stitches throughout this pattern. But if you're a brand new beginner, this is an easy enough pattern that you can do this. So don't be intimidated by this pattern. Okay, so here is my last chain stitch. This is what it looks like right here. You ignore the slip stitch right here, or sorry, the slip knot, and you're only going to go into that chain right there for your last stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on my hook. And you can see I've completed round, sorry, row one, and I'm gonna check myself by counting how many stitches I have. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Let me take out my hook so I can show you 11 a little bit better. 11 is right there. So you ignore the turning chains here. That does not count as a stitch. Our first stitch we made was right here. So if you have 11 
half double crochet stitches in this row. Good job! <laughs> you did it right. And if you didn't, it's okay. Just rewind back and let's try again. All right, so for row two, we're going to chain one, turn our work, and then we're going to half double crochet across for this row. So we're going to go into this first stitch right here by yarning over, inserting our hook, yarn over and draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. So that is one half double crochet completed. Again, yarn over, go into the next stitch, which is, which is right here, insert my hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on our hook. So that's two half double crochets. I'm just gonna continue on down until we reach the end of this row. Again, just doing half double crochets all the way across here. Once you, like I said, once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to make side two, because we need to make two of these, you'll be able to make it much faster. So I've reached the last stitch for my row two. You can see I'm gonna go into right there. I'm ignoring these turning chains here. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on my hook. And that completes row two. So let's do row three, let's get it started together. We're going to chain one, turn, and now we're ready to begin row three. And we're gonna do row three, it's just a repeat of row two. So half double crochet all the way down. And we're actually gonna do this for rows three through nine. And that will give us the base for our game piece here. So I'm almost done with row three. Let me just show you what the last stitch looks like. I've got 10 stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You do not count the beginning chain one. So I have 10 stitches and I have my last stitch that needs to go right there. So I'm ignoring the chain one that's down the side. So I'm gonna yarn over and insert my hook right there to complete my final half double crochet for the row. So again, I'm just gonna continue doing this for rows four through nine, and then I will show you what we do after we finish the base of the pattern. So here I am finishing up the ninth row for this white panel here. So I just cut it off like that, and then I'm going to weave in these two tails here and make two, and I already made two. So there's that. And now I'm going to cut three and a half feet of black yarn, and I've done that so that I can show you how to sew the lines on. So I'm doing, we're doing the tic-tac-toe portion of the panel, so we need to make the grid. So we need to sew lines starting here I'm gonna count one, two, three, and sew a line right here. And then I'm gonna count one, two, three, sew a line right here. And then rotating it, I'm gonna ignore this one right here because we're going to be doing, um, we're gonna be attaching the pouch. So one, two, three, sew a line right there. One, two, three, sew a line right there. So let's do this together. So going, remember, one, two, three, here is the line that I'm going to create, right there. Going up, I'm going to pull my black through until I've got about this much end so that I can weave it in. And then this isn't an exact science. You can do it stitch by stitch if you want. If you wanna split the stitch and go in between so it's more stable, that's how I prefer it. Um, you can do it really long if you want and have just one strand between. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split the stitch so it's just a little bit more stable. So going down, I'm gonna pull it through 
And remember, don't keep pulling it. You want this tail to stay here. So don't pull it, don't pull the tail through as well. So I am going to go up one half stitch over. And then I'm going to go back down right here. So we only need to make this grid on one side of our board, of our pouch. So on this one, this one can just remain white. So this is the part that will be seen, the front. So after each time I pull this up, I like to stretch my fabric back so it's not cinching in on itself. So I'm just going to continue doing this all the way across, giving it a little tug, making sure it's not cinching. Go back up through the middle of a stitch and then back down. So let me show you what it looks like after I've done these, this grid pattern. Okay, so you can see my grid that I've done here and I've woven in the ends on both of these panels. So now I'm ready to single crochet around three of the edges to make the pouch. And then I'm going to base stitch the top so it can uh, cinch together, the pouch can cinch together. So still using my eye hook, I'm going to insert my hook through both thicknesses. You can see through both panels here. And in the pattern it says to use red, but I'm just gonna do black for this demonstration. So I draw up a loop, and then I'm just gonna chain so that I can essentially create a knot and stabilize it. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch through both panels, draw up a loop. So I have two loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through two. There's no exact science whether you go into the middle of a stitch or at the end of the rows. Whatever you decide, just make sure it's consistent throughout the pattern. So I'm going to continue doing this down this edge here, going through both thick thicknesses. There we go. Make sure also that you're lining up these corners here. Otherwise, you're gonna have to redo it because you'll realize once you get to the corner that you don't have it even, and that would be sad. Okay, get some more black yarn. There we go. One more stitch and then I'll have my corner. Here we go. All right, so here's my corner, and I've got it on the front and the back panel. So I'm just going to do my single crochet, rotate my work, and then go along the bottom here. Oh, I forgot to show you this. Let me show you real quick. So weaving, weaving in this black here, I did not. <laughs> you can see the wrong side of my work doesn't look great. Um, if that bugs you, then you can weave it in and make it look nice on the inside too. If I were gifting this to my daughter's classmates, maybe I would um, weave it in and make it look pretty on the inside as well. But this I'm just gonna give to my daughters for uh, Valentine's Day. So that's why I did not take the time to weave it in. And I just carried my yarn between the lines. So again, that's your choice, no judgment here. So you do you. Okay, so I'm rotating it and now I'm going up the side again. Going through both panels and making sure it's consistent. I um, make sure also that you're consistent on the back. So if you are going halfway into a stitch, making, make sure you're doing that halfway on the back too. Otherwise, the back is going to get bigger or smaller and pucker. 
and you don't want that. So make sure you're consistent on both panels. All right, we're doing good. Here, almost done. Can't decide what color I wanna to use to cinch the bag up. <laughs> I initially thought the glitter pink because maybe that would appease my daughters and they wouldn't fight over the glitter hearts as much. <laughs> but maybe it's a good learning opportunity for them to learn how to share. So maybe I should just do the red or black, you know? Don't know, I haven't made up my mind yet. But, okay, so I have reached the top of the bag. So I'm going to fasten off. And these I actually am going to weave and knot these so that the bag can be very stable. Um, so I will do that. So to do the base stitch, you cut a foot of yarn. I decided to do the pink glitter. <laughs> and you're going to go up. Actually, we'll go through the side here so that we'll have the closure on the end. If you want the closure in the middle, that's fine too. So you go up and down into the next stitch up and down. So this creates a nice little cinch closed bag. Once I go all the way around, you're gonna treat, when you reach the end of the front panel, you're going to treat it like it's one big bag. So if I open it up, I'm gonna treat this like it's one stitch. So I'm gonna go back down through like that. And then back up into the next. And I'm only doing this into the top row, of course. Now, if you don't like the look of a raw yarn strand, you could always um, create an I-cord, make an I-cord. Um, I-cords aren't super hard, but it's not beginner friendly. So I just wanted to do something very simple and that's why I chose to do a yarn strand. Um, but you could also do a chain. Uh, if you want to have that look, you could just do chains and then weave that through as well. Okay, so you can see I've made it to the start here. And so then you can just, where's the front and where's the back? There we go. Okay, so if I want to close my bag, I can just cinch it in like that. Creates a nice little bag. And so I will show you how we're going to make the hearts to put inside and then to use for tic-tac-toe. Let's go over how to make one of these hearts for the pieces of the tic-tac-toe. So we're gonna begin by doing a magic ring. To do a magic ring, you're going to lay the yarn across your hand like this, and especially just two of these fingers is what we're gonna be needing. And then you wrap the working yarn around and up so it forms an X. So you can see I've got my tail right here wrapped around and then up. This is my working yarn up this way. And then you're going to take your crochet hook and remember we're doing a G 4.0 millimeter crochet hook. We've switched to our smaller one. You're gonna go under this top part of the X and grab the working yarn split the yarn, there we go, like this, and draw up a loop. And then I'm making sure that I'm holding my thumb on the X there, like this, so that the beginning tail doesn't unravel. So now I'm going to be working into this ring that we formed right here. So this ring right here. So the pattern says we need to do a double crochet into the ring. So I yarn over and do a double crochet like that. 
and then another double crochet into the ring. So two double crochets into the ring and then a half double crochet, another half double crochet, one double crochet, and that is the point of our heart. And then we're going to do two half double crochets, one, two, and then two double crochets, one, and two, and then slip stitch into the ring. And then you fasten off like that. So this is what it looks like and it looks kind of scary. <laughs> Have no fear. You take your beginning tail and you just cinch it up. You pull it taut and it forms the heart for you. So you can see it, how it looks more like a heart now. And then you just weave in the ends and I wanted to show you. So on this heart, I did the beginning tail already, but I wanted to show you what I do with my ending tail. So you can kind of see the magic loop hole is right there. To be honest, this heart hides it pretty well, but usually you can see the magic loop hole better. And so what I like to do is with my ending tail, I flip it to the wrong side and you can see it's coming from the right right here. And what I like to do is I like to go across to the left and weave it in across and it covers that gap so that when you flip it to the right side, you don't see a hole. It covers it really well. So then you just weave it in so that it is nice and secure and can hold up against little hands that may play with this. <laughs> I'm gonna cut it. There we go. As you can see, we've got the makings of a tic-tac-toe board. I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the reds. I'm gonna make five of each color. So anyway, if you enjoyed this, let me know down in the comments. So what do y'all think? Did you enjoy making the tic-tac-toe on the go Valentine's edition with me? I love how it comes in this easy to store case so that theoretically the kids won't lose the pieces. And it also makes it a game board on the front. So it's very convenient and practical. So let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for joining me today. Again, my name is Rachel Alford from Cozy Nooks Designs and thanks again. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you liked it. I am Rachel from Cozy Nooks Designs and make sure that you give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions and subscribe to my channel for future free patterns and tips.